yesterday I was thinking uh, what to speak and uh, thank you for this <coughs> a wonderful festival. Just two days before, uh, Gauram Prabhu was explaining this verse, Namo Akinchana Vittaya, Nirutta Grunatthaya, Atma Ramaya Shantaya, Kaival Pataya Namah, Kunti Maharani's prayers. When I heard that, Shantaya, I felt some hopes. <laughs> because the days, initial days of this place, the kind of things we did here, so no hope for any devotional service. <laughs> but when he explained, uh, when Krishna says, uh, appellance of materialistic people, he says, Atmaram, I am self-satisfied, no need of anything from outside. But when he sees some uh, sadhakas or devotees, they are trying to progress, but does sometimes mistakes or do some uh, mystical things. And Krishna is like a shantaya, he is peaceful. Somebody complains, your devotee is like doing like this, he is chanting, but he is dozing. Krishna, don't worry. At least he is chanting, he is sitting. <laughs> so he is shantaya. So when I heard that, he has some hopes for us. Because <clears throat> initial days, 84, 85, when I, at least I came here, 81, 82, and 84, this orphanage was shifted to Andheri Bhavans. Because these Bhavans wanted to take this place and but Gopinath had some other plans so Gopinath intervened and all devotees moved here 85 I think 85 86 devotees moved here and again all orphanage boys those who are in Avandari Bhavans they moved here back again and where Radha Krishna Palika Mata is staying small room maybe uh, 10 by 20 some 10 by 15 room in that room all 50 children were stopped. <laughs> there are lockers and children were there. <coughs> so, like Dwarakash Prabhu, Shanaj Prabhu explained so nicely. So we are a very small stage here. And on that stage we are small altar, Radha Gopinath. And this hall, like we used to share, in half size we used to put partitions and that side all ch children used to sleep, orphan students will sleep. And this place was for devotees. And Mangalarti used to start 5 o'clock and then all of us sleeping there <laughs> behind the partition. <laughs> and, and now Mangalarti going on, still we snoring. And we used to think it's a good background music. <laughs> still sleeping there. And slowly, Gopinath is so merciful, he elevated. Then we thought, okay, other than sleeping, people are coming from such a far, people are coming here and sometimes we're getting up and going and they're seeing us, we not taken bath and it's not, not, not so good. So we started getting up, but not to come for Mangalarti. We used to get up, 5 o'clock, go down and we used to do yoga there. <laughs> and due to the coming from Mangalarti, 5 o'clock and our boys will do some yoga, just of superficial some exercises to do there. So, <coughs> slowly, slowly, uh, devotees, because when devotees started coming, many of their foreign bodies, devotees were here. So neighbors, they should tell us, see, uh, this Hare Krishna has come here, uh, don't think they are sadhus. <laughs> they say, see how Britishers came in India? <laughs> they came as a businessman and then took took over India. <laughs> so they come as a, some dude sadhus, but they will take over the whole orphanage. <laughs> but <laughs> so they should te teach us these things. And they okay. <laughs> Of course, so Krishna has taken over and for good. <laughs> so uh, they used to call us to watch their houses for movies and all these things and they used to teach us these things. See, they are taking drugs, they are taking these, that, so many things, nonsense things they are doing. So watch. So our boys, they used to go in front of the toilet, they would stand there and they used to think they inside this is smoking ganja or some bees or what. <laughs> they used to watch, children used to watch and sometimes they steal their things. A lot of <coughs> torturements been done initially. But after all these things our devotees will go through, but one thing uh, surprised us or specifically attracted me was there was so much 
blasphemy is so much torture. Any time we used to go in front of any devotee, they used to come close and embrace us. Any child they will see, they will embrace, they will give some sweet. Specifically, uh, here, Vrindavan Prabhu, Azhivar Bhagavan Prabhu, Govind Prabhu, Satyarat Prabhu, Marathi speaking devotees were here. So we go, when we saw them, we got attracted. Yeah, they speak Marathi. <laughs> Till now we just see, hearing this English language and everything was above our heads. And we, outside preaching was that hmm, these are foreigners and they will take over all of you and they will throw you out. <laughs> that was the <laughs> uh, things were told. But when we saw that, hmm, after so much uh, insult and sometimes we used to, just for simple thing we used to fight with them. We used to think, hey, this is our place. And why these people are coming inside? And why they are trying to uh, do things here? Hmm? That was the uh, offensive mood, what boys they had initially. But when we saw that loving affection, loving relationships of duties, hmm? that really changed. Really some, some of our boys, they changed. And slowly, slowly, elderly boys, they started taking interest in Krishna consciousness. And, night, and then Bhagavan Prabhu, uh, some senior devotees, uh, they used to come and tell, they will put Radha Gopinath to rest and they will, they will come and uh, tell some stories. Uh, and they will tell stories and they will distribute prasadam. So these affectionate dealings of devotees really changed people's heart, and it's a boy's heart. <coughs> and then, uh, but initial days, even the brahmacharis, those to join, uh, what we see as a standard, it was not that, that time. Hmm. Some, any of our devotee will go there in Chaupati, he will chant Hare Krishna Maham Mantra, and any of Chaupati person will join, he will come with him. I want to Sadhu Banne Kai. He will come here and next day he will be seven head. Uh, but no culture, no uh, any sort of uh, Vaishnava etiquettes. And some of these people, they will come and fight with children and we are like elderly boys that time. So we were like we were taking boy's side. How can you fight with him? How are you teasing that boy? And one of person I remember, he came and next day he was uh, trying to bossing over the boys. Two, three days we saw. Then one fine day we told boys, we'll do one trick for him. So evening time, one boy went to him and come here, tell some stories. And we brought him here, middle of this hall. And then this hall used to be like a uh, boy's uh, bedroom. So we uh, told two, three boys, bring blankets. <laughs> <laughs> and one, two boys, this side, one we had that uh, uh, connection, this one side, this connection. And then two boys were there, they put off lights, and put all blankets, and 50 boys, <laughs> nice Dulai. <laughs> of that person and next day was off. <laughs> Office, he left. <laughs> that, that kind of <laughs> things where boys were doing with. <laughs> of course, he was not like a long, like he's not like a Bhagavan Prabhu, Govind Prabhu, they're like, a, they're all like elevated devotees, we're knowing them. You know? But some of like a, we used to see that he's not up to the standard and he's trying to boss over the <laughs> boys. <laughs> So, eliminate from him. He is not the qualified person to stay here. <laughs> so, that was the orphan standard, what we had. <laughs> These are sadhus. We used to say, Vrindavan Prabhu or Govind Prabhu, Bhagavan Prabhu. We used to say, they speak nicely, they are in that saffron dress or, you know, we used to see them. So, we used to say, they are sadhus. <laughs> but he is uh, trying to boss over our boys. <laughs> Some things used to happen like that. So, many times, children used to go in the room and directly steal the Mahaprasad without asking. <laughs> one time, I remember, somebody had bought 9 o'clock bhoga, mangal bhog offering, and one of our orphan boy, before offering Lord, he had taken off. <laughs> and now, Pujar is searching over. <laughs> where is the bhoga? Where is bhoga? <laughs> so, <laughs> that a uh, lot of things, <clears throat> initial days, like Dorgash put told, this was like a playground. There we used to personally, I was, when I, once I got fractured here in the same hall while playing football. <laughs> it was the 10th exam, and to just relieve from tension, we were playing night, night 8, 11 o'clock, we were playing football here. <laughs> really, 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 then I got fractured, hand fracture here. So, 
<coughs> this is like a playground and then but later on when uh, many duties started coming here and the anger classes to go on yoga classes and then go in the go in gopnath the shunga darshan is open and here they are doing shirsasan or so many other asanas <laughs> the legs up feet up and then somebody is doing shavasan and go in the madhi purusham tamaham bajami gopna tolerates so much you know i'm from such a ground he bought now such a uh, culture uh, <coughs> Uh, place here and <coughs> i think 89 uh, pune yatra the hmm, kashpur so so lot about lot about pune yatra so from first pune yatra is to because every yatra we had concession from our from uh, students every yatra 10 students is to go uh, for yatra every time <laughs> so so every yatra i was there for from beginning <laughs> because i was supporting this krishna consciousness from little bit what background i had little bit. so they say yeah, he is nice if you take him then all others will follow <laughs> <laughs> so every yatra at least my number was there from pune yatra 86 87 all yatras we used to attend and then what prabhu was saying lifting devotees and dancing it's amazing that uh, <coughs> kirtan ras in 89 uh that's that's why it's, it's gopinath is very jagrut dev hmm? sorry jagrut devasthan yes you pray and then it's your wish fulfilled hmm? so 89 uh, pune yatra we came back i was studying for exams and one fine day no clue whether to join or do anything this this fine day i just studying uh, for exams and I was in tears. I was crying, crying, crying. Half an hour trying to control my tears, but somehow I'm not able to control tears. I was crying, and inside it's hard of dancing. And just only one thing was I was remembering. That was that's chants and then Maharaj's voice and the kirtan. Everything that things were going in Pune Yatra. What just few days back I was uh, relished that that things were going on in heart. I was crying, crying. then i just decided, half an hour trying to control myself and after that i decided ki now henceforth i can't continue this material world it's impossible it's impossible i can't do this i can't do job i can't go anywhere i can't be with material people so i just came up this sat this gopina ji here as sitting here and is crying as tears you know, streaming tears are flowing from my eyes and is praying gopinath i don't know what is happening it's up to you you guide my life you decide what i should do and i remember i just prayed behind going to was sitting there just cleaning plates or oh, wiping plates i asked him because in pune yatra i heard rundan was explaining about belgam yatra how was belgam place and um, tirthakunde how shiva temple and from shiva temple that shooting that water flows and that water goes to village and it's a beautiful place and i was from beginning from childhood attracted to this natural environment now i am in wada <laughs> <laughs> so from child i was very much attracted to this natural conditions of life so <clears throat> when i heard that i thought okay, i had to go that place i had to go that place and i asked going to is, is possible to get to go to belgaum and somehow he sensed something why you want to go to belgaum so i don't know this i just i'm thinking i will in summer season i will go <laughs> for vacation i will go <laughs> I, ca- i can't dare him to tell ki i want to go and join there so can you go down rundan pro is there and he wants to go to belgaum so <clears throat> when then he want to take radha gopinath altar i think we had changed altar and beginning altar previous altar was there he wanted to belgaum he wanted some extra person to carry that altar and he already had extra ticket that day so he told me yeah, if you are coming it's very nice and then after when then 2 3 days later i told him i am not co- going back to Bam- bombay again so i stayed there only so <coughs> so i just thought it's such a powerful just pray and krishna gopinath is just there if you just comes for heart of course if you pray for good 
its results are good if you pray for something bad then you go on so that's my own experience uh, sometime as somebody was getting initiated here and one of uh, i don't know if should tell or not <laughs> but how i fall in trouble this one girl was getting uh, initiated and his name was uh, my name was ram raj and the girl was getting initiated sita then it's, it's good match somehow this came in mind after three four years i fall in uh, almost in that condition and i suffered after one or two years i suffered lot and that suffering from belgam brought me back again here and it is like such a torment such as squeezing of heart krishna literally purified not not purified or anything but some of that if you pray for good it results good but it's just a small desire for sense gratification and krishna give the results of that and when i came back and i was going through lot attachments and wanted to leave the brahmacharya ashram at the same time the attachments were taking me there and then i just uh, his owner radhan swami maharaj is such a um, gentle and he was like so nice care he told me every day you should come to my room 5 minutes at least sit 5 minutes in my room every day you should come and see me i was trying my best and especially going prabhu and bhagwan pro supported so much still that's why when they told me ki you have to come and speak i thought this last thing i will do this to come and speak on dais and such a elevated gathering but well they put to then is put to go in pro i know i will not speak i will not tell him no karke <laughs> so i agree to okay, i will come <laughs> because he given me new life going through and bhagwan pro because i'm here just because of them they support so much they like again and they like, hours together they come and sit with me and console me and then on fine day it's the radhashmi day i went to maharaj he called me he told see rup ragunath i pray to radharani today is radhashmi oh my dear radharani if you so desire please help me to remain brahmachari and he told you work hard whole day work hard and pray from heart intense prayer and i just prayed in front of radharani that day worked whole day in kitchen work hard and evening i was just praying in front of radharani tears in eyes ki please please help me and going through knows next day whole thing was solved that girl run away with somebody else <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so and <laughs> mehra going to tell me he was so happy and anandam was in bathroom were dancing oh so nice we <laughs> were dancing in <laughs> yes he said he said he brought me in maharaj room and it's maharaj told yes that was south india kal krishna was lord with uh, with lord chaitanya he was dragged by <coughs> bataris and it was the same thing <laughs> that time lord chaitan personally intervened he brought kal krishna back now gopinath personally intervened he brought him back so 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 vishnu was in gopinath's mercy so <clears throat> since that day i was very much attached to deities because personally i prayed by maharaj guidance and his mercy now because he important he put that force in that prayers otherwise i don't have that quality so then slowly because i was attached and then i was put in uh, deity worship and we got in uh, <coughs> deity worship uh, like a pujari department and initial days i uh, still remember i and uh, we had meeting with maharaj and when they posted me you be head pujari here so i went to maharaj and i told ki maharaj uh, now i be head pujari so any instruction for me i thought ki maharaj will tell some some highly past times you know rundavan or some not very high thing the head pujari so you should be in that high consciousness 
So <laughs> I went to Maharaj and he paused for a few seconds and I told. So, Ruh Prabhunath, you are head pujari of a world famous temple, but never try to become boss of devotees. No, don't, never try to become master of devotees. Always be the humble servant of devotees. That was it's, uh, uh, <coughs> heavy. <laughs> and at the same time, it's, uh, that's what I was needed. So that's how it, he, was, he was training pujaris, how should take up this uh, service. And <coughs> initial days, because we didn't have much manpower for deity worship. One fine day, we had to uh, announce a Sunday feast. Okay, if anybody is interested, those are Brahman initiated and those interested in deity worship, please come up. <laughs> and then after that we got almost get 75 pujaris <laughs> next week. <laughs> so many congregation duties started coming up. Otherwise, initially I remember, uh, they used to do dressing, you know, brahmacharis, or, uh, they used to do dressing and they will dump everything behind and they will go back. And then uh, head pujari will have to at least till 8 to 11 he has to just wind up the whole thing <laughs> behind, <laughs> alone just do the whole thing. <clears throat> but slowly, slowly we see, so nicely this uh, uh, things are uh, growing and so nice, uh, affluent, uh, gorgeous things are coming up. <clears throat> I was just speaking to uh, Radha Priyamataji how they were looking uh, dresses and uh, jewelries. Mm. Initial days, uh, we didn't had much funds for making dresses. Mm. They used to have uh, Janmast, one dress was sponsored by from temple, they will give Lakshmi for Janmast dress, other dresses we manage. So Mataji, they used to have their own funds. Uh, Mataji, they will come together, they will contribute and they will have funds for making dresses. And Maizim dress will cost like 20,000, 30,000. Maybe Janmashmi dress will be like a 50, maximum 60,000. That was highest. Now it's almost lakhs. <laughs> what we have. So initially, <coughs> one realization they had, we always, we have fixed management, measurement. Shirt, kurta, pan, everything for Gopinath, Gaurnita. But every time dress is, is to come, and at least shirt will be tight or pant will be loose. The tailor will say every time same measurement why it's always uh, no fitting. <laughs> it's always it's she had the realization that their dress never fitted, never fixed. Always some, sometimes open and slim, sometimes little fat. So I don't know. Never realized how it was happening. <coughs> and you will make four uh, dresses. Main dresses to be sponsored by like a somebody's marriage here, then they will sponsor the dress. Depends on the budget. If like a budget for uh, low budget, and then they will, that will be like a night dress. And then so high budget, then that will be the day dress. No schedule. This is a Janmashtami or Gaur Purnima. But this depend on the duties sponsors. But that was like a uh, initial days of how we used to stitch the dresses and and many of these matas they will like a four months, six months before we will give the dress and then they will stitch and they will put sequences and embroidery and all these things. The dress will be distributed at least 15-20 places, at least 10-15 places. One shirt will this place, one pant this place, skirt this place, shawl other place and then the day of festival that dress will come. <laughs> Morning 5 o'clock, <laughs> sometimes Mother driver will go to some other place. Mother has she has, they have to bring the shirt here. Pant is there, bus cut is not there. Still stitching going on. <laughs> morning five o'clock. <laughs> Vehicle is to come here. <laughs> some many times because because many devotees are involved in that services. And I remember still they miss a lot. Huh? Those who are like involved in making the dresses and shawls and jewelries. Many are involved. And still they, they were telling me it's, we miss a lot, <laughs> that atmosphere. <coughs> but now, of course, Gopinath is always growing, so we also have to grow. 
That's what His Holiness uh, Radhan Maharaj had told uh, when we, <coughs> at least, uh, but at least I uh, remember the way we think we are pujaris, we are taking care of deities, but at least many times I remember it's a uh, they take care of us. They manage the schedules. They actually uh, uh, at least remind you what things has to be done, what. I remember once it's a nine o'clock offering, it's a Mangal Bhava offering and we had scheduled so one of Pujari supposed to come and do the offering. And I was just chatting with devotees in Brahmachari Ashram just on uh, lockers who is sitting and just four or five brahmacharis, I was just there. And suddenly, 9.26-27, just two minutes before, I was so uneasy, I was so uneasy, what's happening? And I jumped from locker and just came, just ran to the room. And saw no pujari there. Actually, within two minutes, we had to, before that, place has to be ready, offering plate, bhoga plate, everything. Has to, like 10, 15 minutes before, all these things has to be ready. And now 9.30, I have to close the curtain. And now I had to go uh, for offering. And till just two minutes before, nothing was there. No tiffin had brought from up from kitchen, kitchen or down that time. No tiffin has come there. And we just, uh, I thought, nobody is here. And now I was not a clean for that, to go inside altar also. But we had emergency, some rules for pujaris. <laughs> so I just, uh, I just remembered all this, there is a sad for Achman and he remember all those Tirthas what we visited. There is the emergency code for that. <laughs> it is not for, be followed every time. <laughs> it is very emergency. Ki all Tirthas very visited, taken bath, just remember Jagannath, Puri, Rundavan, uh, Mayapur, or just, just where you were taken bath, just remember all the Tirthas were from Achman and just ran inside. A close curtain and then we did offering two three devotees we called bought made plates and on time it was done then immediately in between ten minutes we went to bath and did the arti so <coughs> till then I was thinking ki, yes and pujari and things that I am planning or I am managing but I just realized ki, actually he who within inspires to do these things of course depends on our uh, sincerity and um, uh, the service we are doing. <coughs> and once Mother uh, Pramodaj asked Maharaj, uh, why not we have silver plates for deities? Because four times the what plates we have, they will. It's, a, it's almost like brass and outside the like silver coating. So we wanted to make, because four times if you polish that, make in silver, for polishing it takes at least four times polish in that cost you will get new plates. That much costing for just polishing, silver plating. So we thought why not have our own like a silver plates, but because of uh, lack of security, hmm? we didn't have that time much security here. So Maharashtra, if you have this kind of things in the altar or inside the room, one thing Inside person, if he is not sincere, then he may get desire to steal something. He will run, run away with the things. Otherwise, will attract things from outside for that matter. So then, we didn't have any uh, extended discussion about that. <laughs> and then once I was just, <coughs> uh, we had a decoration every time. So what previously, what was happening, Uh, so we used to put nails on altar. And the Maharaj took, you know, how can you put nails on altar? It's Ananta Shesh. No way you can put nails or put your feet, even not foot. How can you put your nails on Ananta Shesh? It's a, the Lord is residing on that altar. How can you do that? Then next day we had to remove all nails. It was golden altar, full golden, color golden. But now then, after smart, immediately remove all nails next day. Then we have to remove all nails and remove that golden uh, color and we had then again this 
maroon polish and then golden leaves on that <coughs> but once we had wanted to have uh, some uh, at least two three nails on altar for tying that uh, effulgence behind deity so we asked uh, is at least one nail on about deity okay no nail not at all okay at least one nail on <laughs> we just want to hang that effulgence there I was walking with Maharaj there near staircase, and he said, "One nail, just for this one effulgence, want to hang on that." He told me, "Previous kings, when they are walking and they used to have effulgence behind their head, how that they were hanging from up." <laughs> it's, 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 it's fact actually; they were not hanging from up. <laughs> they used to have some some on the crown where they can hang the. Then so is just follow the instruction. Krishna gives intelligent. So then we had the uh, other Prabhu, then he told me, plan that uh, movable stands where we can fix the effulgence behind that. That was the story behind making that stands and all these things. So, <coughs> so wonderful uh, uh, time what we had. Uh, uh, Gopinath and it's so many stories and uh, uh, the way he uplifted the whole environment from such a degraded thing, so many offensive things were happening, and such a uh, wonderful, hmm, wonderful Vaishnava culture because of Zonas Radharan Swami Maharaj, all this Bhakti Rasamrita Maharaj, going from all these wonderful Vaishnavas, and now we see such a great place. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srada Vipnar Bhagavan Aki.